your places, take your seats. And um, so we will start we will start right now with the um, presentation of our colleague uh, from Purushota Research Center, uh, Russian People's Friendship University, Moscow, um, uh, Dr. Andrei Paribok, anagrams in Dhammapadam, multi-dialectical nature of its verses. Uh, well, uh, is it necessary to switch on the microphone? Presentation. Ah, okay. Well, well, my the frame of my presentation is to draw attention to non purely logical artic that is that to say artistic and literary means of conveying content. Uh, including the doctrinal and the philosophical content. I'll uh, begin with the example, not directly connected with the main theme. The famous simile uh, in Sankhya of uh, uh, milk and sour in milk. The uh, milk is uh, compared to property, but I, perhaps I read not, uh, not all texts but it seems to me that in, but that in the, in, uh, that in the uh, literature, nowhere is elucidated what, uh, in detail, what does it serve, this similar, uh, this simile of, uh, of property and milk. But uh, we, I, can, I can elucidate it myself. You see, property is one name and the total balance of the three gunas is another name for one and the same reality. We begin with milk. Milk has no structure, uh, if we have no microbe, so to. And so it is quite comparable to the, uh, to the balance of uh, sattva, rajas, and tamas. Then uh, we leave it at peace, and in some two days, we see it, it is sour milk. What has happened? The sour milk uh, comes up. And it is it is white, and it it is it can be compared with sattva. Way rests down, at, and it is compared with tamas. And what is the force which divided way and the sour milk? It is rajas. And I think that uh, I'm, uh, I think that the Indian uh, addressees of this symbol understood everything, but not so with the European addressees. And they perhaps uh, uh, were a bit perplexed. What what is the purport of this scenario? That's because and it is one of the crucial points of the uh, Sankhya doctrine, and it is expressed quite aptly without logical uh, <coughs> devices, but or, or by but artistically. But now I proceed to the main theme. Now, the Mahapada is uh, known, is uh, famously known as perhaps the most popular Buddhist text uh, in the West. It has been translated, perhaps in English, dozen, uh, several dozen times and published. And, but, uh, but all these editions, uh, I can't, can't say I perused all, but I, uh, I looked through all of them. Uh, all, all of them lack in detailed commentary about the poet, or about the poet, uh, about the poetical side of this anthology. We can certainly we can say that uh, Dhammapada is an anthology of Subhashtas attributed to Buddha. Well, uh, generally speaking, there are many verses in the Pali uh, Buddhist canon, and uh, in them there are represented all the three main forms of, in, of old Indian poetry. I mean the epic poetry. The hierarchic, uh, hierarchic Brahmin poetry, uh, which, or, which the origin of which is Purveda, and the folklore poetry. Uh, well, as to the first, the epic poetry, I, uh, I can remind you about Wangisa, who was an epic poet before, before uh, his career as a Buddhist monk. And uh, the, uh, the canon presents a lot, of, uh, a lot of his improvisation in a purely epic style. As to the folklore, uh, we can, uh, for example, there is a, 
uh, a Gandharva in one of the suttas of the Tibbanikaya uh, sings a love song accompanying himself with in a vina. It is, uh, it's purely folklore. And as to the uh, as to the uh, for me of the special interest, the theoretic, the proper poetry, I I can also perhaps uh, to make clear what I mean. I can say I can uh, quote the first father uh, of the hymn, the self praise of the Buddhist work. It's the self praise of watch, but the but, but the word watch is never mentioned here. It is to be uh, it is to be understood who praises himself or herself. Yes. Well, so there are not uh, not so many, but a considerable amount of separate verses uh, included in Dhammapada. Which in which the Buddha or alleged Buddha uh, used these uh, these old way uh, these old poetical methods, but what is very interesting, uh, we have and perhaps a bit astonishing, uh, we have a traditional commentary uh, written in Pali after one thousand years. The, comment, uh, the commentators have not a, not the slightest understanding of, of what is said poetically here. The, uh, so the uh, the self understanding of the tradition has deteriorated rather drastically deteriorated uh, after a millennium, and it is in accordance with the prediction of the Buddha himself. So, but uh, so they comment everything. Except, except the hidden meaning, and now we shall uh, discuss especially the hidden the hidden meanings of some of the verses. Please, the first slide. Ah, on a different posture. Ah, no, what that? Sorry. Sorry. Just a moment, please. There is a technical interruption. Before proceeding to the examination of the my examples, oh say in general, but it proved to be that Buddha, or the author of these verses, pronounced the individual verses in different old Indian and uh, old Prakrit idioms, mutually understandable in the two books, which, uh, con which concrete uh, varieties of the idiom was used, we can guess or we can uh, prove it by restoring uh, a specific grammatical and, phonolo phonolo uh, and phonological variety of such and such verse uh, in which and that uh, that uh, idea was the original in which the hidden meaning is uh, can be seen uh, sometimes it is Pali sometimes it is Sanskrit and sometimes I think it is neither Pali nor Sanskrit because there existed for example uh, uh, Purely extant the Gandhari Dhammapada, and there were other uh, other Dhammapadas. But, but my proficiency in, uh, in Gandhari is lucky, is rather poor. But, but I, I just understand Sanskrit and Pali uh, pretty well. So I am I I'll use only this for answer. But certainly I have missed something, uh, which was which was, was said in other idioms in other dialects. Mm -hmm. 
Now, the sim uh, now the simplest uh, layer of this hidden of these hidden meanings is as such in the uh, well, uh, in the Matavago, it is 19th Vaga. There are some verses with the comparison and and, uh, and contrast between the usual meaning of the word and the well and the deep meaning of the word in accordance with the Buddha, with the Buddhist thinking or Buddhist tradition. But in, for example, the matra that means dharmastra is not simply working as a judge, but it is said that he is uh, that, that it is somebody confirmed in the uh, confirmed in the Buddhist dharma, an uh, expert in the Buddhist dharma. Both. The uh, elucidations are true to the to the language, but the first is superficial and the second is more deep. And in general, when we say, when we speak about the superficial meaning and the hidden meaning, it is certainly comparable with the fundamental uh, conceptual pair of the Buddhist thinking. Also, we find that this pair, uh, this pair of opposites also in Vedanta thinking of the uh, Samuti Samriti of Yavahara and Paravata. The superficial meaning is Samriti, and the uh, hidden meaning is Parapata. That is what is really being said in, in, that, in, that, in, that, in that verse. Well, then, I said about uh -huh. the matter that must the second pandita is not a one one who knew who learned math, uh, many texts yeah. or uh, who knows many. He's not a scholar, but he also behaves wisely and morally with others, and, and it is the content of the verse. So we know that for for millennia, this word Pandita had these two aspects these two, uh, of the meaning. But here we have uh, the, them in contrast. And then, uh, Hera, that's Tavira. It, it's not one at all, not at all, one trivially having gray hair because of the old age. Because such a person is, uh, has a true name, Moga Jinna, and no, uh, that, that who, who had grown, grown old in vain. Moga, yeah. but he, uh, then, but who is it here? It's an elder, uh, elder, uh, no, not by his uh, physical age, but because he is older in the knowledge of Dharma. And Bhikkhu, the, the, last, uh, the, the last example, is not, uh, is not considered um, uh, as somebody who depends on bonds. But certainly, it is the it is the uh, uh, first meaning of this word because bhikshu is from the bhaj. It, it, it is the uh, yes, uh, from the bhaj who who, uh, who is dependent on the, on uh, on somebody's own bhaga. Well, then, but uh, according to the etymology, also the uh, bhikshu uh, is a person. A, a person who had overcome the opposition of bad and evil, an evil attitude towards himself. Bahira. Now, let's proceed to, uh, or so to say, puns or uh, uh, nothing, no? Well, then I'll speak repeatedly and uh, slowly to make you understand. Yes. Well, well we have the uh, we have the Dhammapada um, verse 13, first in Pali. 
yata agaram dutchanam gulke samate vidjati evam abhavitam chittam rago samate vidjati and the uh, English translation just as rain breaks through a nail thatched house so passion penetrates an undeveloped mind well it sounds quite plausible but we can ask why passion and not hatred dvesha or not folly moha because all three are the fundamental poisons according to the buddhist teaching but you see here uh Pali suffices it because we uh let's hear yet and then rago samati so agaram rago agaram rago And it is expected that one will understand it, yes? And the uh, reverse would have been said in vain for, for, for everybody who doesn't understand it. Mm. Then, Dhamma Pada 151, first in Pali, then translation. Jiranti Vira Janatha Suchitta Adhosha Sariramti Jaramupi. Jiranti Vira Janatha Suchitta Adhosha Sariramti Jaramupi. In English, even gorgeous royal chariots wear out, and indeed this body too wears out. Well, well, but if we say the same in Sanskrit, it will be, as it was pro uh, pronounced in Sanskrit or semi Sanskrit, it will be more interesting. Jiranti Vairajaratha Suchitra Atho Shariranti Jaramu Peti. We have here Anuprasa J, R, Ch, T, and this Anuprasa leads us to the hidden meaning. I'll pronounce it first in Sanskrit. Yatha. Raja Shariranam, Eva Meva Jara, no, Yatha Raja Rajanam, Eva Meva Jara Shariranam. Certainly, yes, you agree. Yes. Yes. The, the king is, the old age is king for us having having physical body. Now, also, now with hidden meaning also, first in, and this was, uh, was pronounced in Pali. Or in something like Bali. And here we have uh, this pair of verses. Anikka savo ka savam yu matram parida esati apetu dama satchina nasu ka savo varakati. Yu chavanta ka savasa sile su suham su samayitu. Upetu dama satchina savi ka savo varakati. Not in English translation. Oh. Whoever being depraved, devoid of self-control and truthfulness, should don uh, the monk's yellow robe, he surely is not worthy of authority. And uh, the opposite. But whoever is purged of depravity, well established in virtues, and filled with self-control and truthfulness, he indeed is worthy of the yellow robe. Well, it is uh, purely didactical and de uh, almost devoid of any poetical value. <laughs> But we are, but here we have as the sound, not only anuprasa, because not only consonant, but also the uh, vowels are involved. Kasavo, amik kasavo, kasavo, vatsam kasavo, susu, e kathavo marakati. Here we have ka and ka, sa and sa, va and va. And so the hidden meaning is the definition of savaka. That means shravaka, but, uh, but almost anybody can uh, can, uh, can be blood clad in the yellow robe. But who is the real student of the Buddha? It is said here in the in the superficial meaning. But which definition of which object is it? It's in the hidden meaning. Then, 
number 98. Here we shall see that it was initially said pronounced in Sanskrit. Now, we from Pali. Ramiya Yadivarenyi, Nineva Yadivatale, Yetera Hunto Viherenti, Tambu Viramani Ekam. Let's uh, in English, inspiring indeed is that place where Arahats dwell, be it a village, a forest, a vale, or a hill. <laughs> Let it be so. But it leaves us the opportunity to ask a meticulous question. What explains the choice of such as of such places? Why it is said village and the forest, and not let's say a village and the town? Because Buddhist monks visit settlements of uh, different sizes, or a village and the or not a village and the great road leading from a village to the city. Uh, why, why a vale or a hill and not mountains and plains or maybe bank of a river? We have no answer. But let's translate it or uh, restore the uh, restore the sense. And we shall uh, we shall hear. Grameva Yadiva Ranye, Nemneva Yadiva Stale, Yatra Hanto Viheranti Sadhu Vi Ramaniyaka. Grame Yava Divaranye. It is funny. What it is the hidden meaning? Margeva Yadiva Nirvane. And the place is that Bhumi. Bhumi uh, in the ordinary uh, speech is place. But uh, but it also means a spiritual level. So it is said that the Buddhist disciple Shravaka in at any spiritual level dwells, uh, dwells psychic, uh, uh, mentally well. And why Nimni Yadivastrale? Because there are four pairs of Aryan uh, persons. And first is the dynamic one, it is Nimni. And the second is stale, the static one. First is uh, one is in the process of acquiring such such level. And second, he abides in this level. Huh? He dwells at this level. That's it's, uh, we have completely uh, explained the hidden meaning. And uh, now I shall say, which will also uh, make sense for it, as to the previous. Uh, stances uh, as to those who will uh, be uh, discussed later. That the mental process of understanding the hidden meaning is comparable to the mental process in the yogi's mind. Because yogi discloses which is in his mind, but was uh, left un uh, unmentioned by him. Now it is, it is already here, for example. The nirvana is is not to be accomplished. It is to be understood that it is here all the time. So this uh, hidden meaning was in the uh, was in the stanza all the time, but it was unexplained, understood, and unnoticed. When we notice it, we it is the first step. The first uh, the first step is within the poetic word, uh, the uh, the poetic language. The second step is within one's own psyche, one's own uh, mentality. And so it is, in a, uh, so to say, a kind of, sp of spiritual training, the understanding of these verses. And also I mentioned why the Buddhist tradition became deaf to all this, uh, to, 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 uh, to this poetic, to, uh, to, to this poetic explicit methods. Because the, after the millennium, they, are, uh, they were forgotten. And the poetic uh, contemporary to the Buddhist uh, to the Buddhist commentaries, what was quite un, uh, quite other commentary, quite, quite other poetics. We can't find all these these methods, uh, for example, in Dungeons and other and other uh, theorists' uh, books. It is, uh, they were superseded by by more uh, by new uh, by new po uh, poetical methods. Now then. Ramaniyani Aranyani Yat Taranam Parakna Aramati Jano Vita Raga Ramisanti Nati Kama Gavishino. 
inspiring are the forests in which worldlings find no pleasure. There, the passionless will rejoice. There, the passionless will, will rejoice. For they seek no sensual, sensual pleasures. Uh, in Sanskrit, uh, it is heard better. Ramaniya yaraniyani yatra na ramati jana. Because there is no atmane for the Pali, but ramati is atmane for the Pali. Ramati jana. Vita raga ramishanti nati kama gadeshu. And here we have first the complete palindrome, Ramaniyan Yaranyani. Then we can say Yatra na Ramatijana. But also we hear in the periphery of our uh, understanding Yatra na Mara Tejana, shaft of an arrow, Tejana. Mara Ramati Rama. That the, the so the Aranya, the uh, forest without uh, world without world links, is uh, auspicious for the yogi because there 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 we have no temptations personified by Mara and Vitaraga Ramishanti certainly Vitaraga those who have overcome Raga and they will rejoice, but also Vita Agara Mishyanti. They will open their eyes because, because they are rid of both of the dwelling uh, of, uh, of the foe and of the Raga. Now, and now the uh, perhaps uh, something I'll admit, but I'll show that, that this approach uh, to the text as a multilingual, as a multi-ideal text, will solve a riddle of the first uh, utterance of the Buddha, which is called technically Ajna, or Ajna, Ajna. That's if somebody, again, uh, gains uh, enlightenment or uh, awakening, he usually pronounces a short verse. Many of them are, are, are kept by the tradition. For what the southern, the Theravada Buddhist tradition says, that according to it says, the Buddha pronounced first after having become Buddha. These are the stanzas 153 and 154. Anika Jati Sansaram, Sangravi Samanibhusam, Gehagarakan Gavisantu, Dukadiyati Kumatpuram. Gahagaraka did proceed, Punat Geham the Kahasi, Sabati Pasuka Bagga, Gahakutan Visankatan, Visankara Gatan Shitan, and Haram Kayamajaka. It's what it is, uh, it is uh, no translation. Through many a birth in Sansara have I wandered in vain, seeking in, seeking in the builder of this house, house of life. Repeated birth is indeed suffering. O house builder, you're seen. You are seen. You will not build this house again. For your raptors are broken, and your rich birth shattered. My mind has reached the unconditioned. I have attained the destruction of grain. Now what, who is this house builder? The, Come, traditional commentary says it is uh, in Pali, tan, Tanha Vandreki, that is Trishna Vardhani, but why? But it is never said. It is from the uh, this general Buddhist sense. But it is said quite clearly if we restore the Sanskrit, or perhaps quasi Sanskrit, but on, because it is one direction from the Pali, uh, from the Pali roots of the one of the lines, what it is said, first I'll say it. Uh, in part, Gahakara Kadittosi Punageham Nakahasi. In Sanskrit. Ah, Gurhakara Kadrushdosi Punagurham Nakashiasi. Gurhakara Kadrushdosi Punagurham Nakashiasi. It is evident and prasa with G, K, R. It is Raga. Raga is the hidden meaning 
of this riddle. Yes. And what is what has Buddha said? Raga accompanied him as he wandered through samsara. But now he sees it. And after seeing Raga, Raga cannot anymore uh, lead to any new sanskaras. We sanskara gatam chitta, he says. It is to be seen directly. And, that is, and what is expected from the hearer? That he will hear and see the word Raga in this line. And if it is, uh, it is the first step to become Buddha, and that is to see not the word Raga, but the Raga itself. As, as soon as you see the Raga, it's, uh, the, the word Raga, you have convinced that the Buddha says truth, subjective truth, that he managed to do th something. As soon as you see the Raga, in your spiritual activity as a yogi, you become an atman. And the, the, the sansara is closed. So it is, I think that these examples, there are some other of them, certainly, uh, sufficiently with the political or literary layer of a text is in a number of cases in this uh, in dispensary, we need it to understand the full purpose of the meaning of the uh, and further it was uh, developed in many Buddhist, in many not only Buddhist traditions but uh, other philosophical Indian, Indian traditions by using symbols which are not deciphered. I I gave the first. It's very simple uh, symbol of the three gunas and, and milk. But also, I'm ready for the way we have time for to discuss another symbol, the symbol of the cook, and uh, of the cook, Raja, and five scandals in the Buddhist uh, teaching, which gives in a literally, in a you know, form, not in a logical form, the complete theory of five scandals. It is also not discussed in the text, in the Atatsalini. Because the author of this text presupposes the aptness of the of the uh, of the reader, but this aptness certainly lacks in European investigators, and they do not understand it properly. So this is, so to say, a bridge from philology to philosophy, and as the similes, similes, the opamas, opamya, are indispensable in any uh, Buddhist, uh, in any Indian tradition. We have to develop also the literary artistic mind and not only the pure, purely scholastic, boring, uh, boring logical mind. And uh, to confirm it, we uh, have uh, a confirmation of the found in Nyaya. We, have, we know such Ramanas as Anumana and Upamana. Anumana is the usage of the of the logical connections between two and uh, two items. Upamana use the similarity, and we use both Upamana and uh, Anumana to confer the totality of meaning to our students, if we are, uh, if we are professionals in such and such Indian tradition. Thank you for your attention. Daniel Dapka and Daisy, we thank uh, Dr. Paribok uh, for his uh, enlightening and uh, mind blowing speech. So, if anybody has a question, you can ask or any remark. Well, it was so perfect that there are no comments. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there are some people who are online. Want to ask a question? Sure. Uh, they can't. It's a question. My PowerPoint didn't work. No, it's not a meaningful message. I mean, it's it's meaningful for the one who sent it, but not for us. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Anyone else come? 
maybe as a remark, I could uh, say that uh, uh, Andrej, we spoke about uh, riddles, you can say, in um, Buddhist texts, but we, just before his speech, we uh, had discussed um, uh, like a similar situation with the poetry of uh, Goswami Tulsidas, though it was, it's not in, in Sanskrit, but it's in our deeds, but uh, has many features of Sanskrit literature and poetry. And um, whenever I uh, speak about Swamiji's poetry, I say that why Westerners cannot understand the true deeper meaning of the poetry is because they, they like two things, which is Dwani, so they cannot hear it properly, and Ras, that they cannot feel it properly. They can only translate it in a scientific way. And as an example, uh, there's a Doha which starts with Pancha Vati Vata Vita Pata Rasiya Lakhana Samen Sohata Tulasidasa Prabhu Sakala Sumangala Dev. So the translation into English or any other language is very, very primitive. It's just the Lord is sitting under the tree in Panchavati and that's it. But uh, the, the, here there's a whole picture. Pancha Vati Vata Vita Vata Rikya Hai Ye Chiriya Chiriya Vol Rehya Chiriya Ki Baat Chir Hai so birds are talking to each other and they are discussing this couple sitting under the tree. So Westerners, translators cannot approach that. So it can be parallel with uh, what Andreji was saying. And um, we would like to invite the second speaker. This is our colleague from St. Petersburg who works for the uh, Institute of Oriental Manuscripts, uh, Sergei Burmistro, who is with us. He is going to speak about principles of uh, causality in Mahayana. Well, dear colleagues, of course, uh, I should not, I will not uh, try to embrace the, the embraceable. And I will speak uh, firstly about uh, Mathyamaka. Uh, I will uh, touch slightly Yoga Shara school, but uh, the main uh, theme will be, the main material will be, of course, uh, Mathyamaka and uh, namely uh, works of Nagarjuna, Mola Mathyamaka Karika. Uh, and uh, commentaries by Buddha Palita, Mohammad Hemo Kabrihti, and uh, Shinra Kirti, and Prasanapada. Well, what is uh, causality according to Mahayana? <coughs> In uh, Hinayana schools, uh, I mean, first the uh, Vasopandhu, Vidar Makusha, and the Vidar Makusha Bashi. Of course, uh, Hinayana schools uh, did not uh, refute uh, causality and more, 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 more at least. Um, uh, causality was uh, uh, the main principle of uh, Hinayana Buddhist philosophy because all karma, all karma. Uh, links, uh, all karma connections. Uh, are uh, causal, uh, cause and effect. But uh, according to uh, Sangha, uh, one of the founders of uh, Yvashara school uh, of the century, uh, both the Vitarka and Vichara, uh, or discursive thinking and uh, reflection, uh, are the means uh, are the means of uh, constructing the uh, so say uh, epistemological uh, obstacles to uh, the enlightenment and uh, in his Vedanta uh, Samuchaya compared to Vedanta he uh, defines these uh, terms as such. What is uh, discursive thinking, Vedanta? This mental discussion or Vana Jalpa representing a search for wisdom and based on volitional effort. It represents a gross level of thinking. Now, what is a reflection, Michar? This critical mental discussion representing a search for wisdom and uh, based on volitional effort. 
it represents a certain level of thinking. Both of them, it is uh, discursive thinking and, and reflections. Reflection are the foundations for uh, peace or restlessness, for the action of, of good darkness, is the elimination of what is opposite to them, the action of uh, primary and secondary efforts, uh, flesh and uh, pleasure, uh, is the position that what is opposite to them. So, uh, what is uh, Manu Chalka according to Ernst Hiramati, uh, who commented Masanga Sabedam Sumche, Vedam Sumche Pashya? It defines Manu Chalka as a constant, uh, constant and uh, never ending men mental conversation, internal speech, uh, through which a person uh, determines and relates. What is in front of him, what, what is before him, uh, and, uh, and the validity of assumptions uh, regarding objects perceived by them at the moment. So, uh, both uh, Bodhapalita, Chandra Activity, Nagarjuna, uh, Masanga, uh, they, they consider the concept of Dharma as the result of discursive thinking, as, as the result of Vitaka. Uh, or the process during which the unaligned uh, mind, unaligned consciousness, so let's say, cuts off uh, some sensory object or Vishaya, I mean, you know, exactly sensory objects, because there are a uh, vast the thing itself, respectively, to whether somebody perceives it or whether it or not. Vishaya is the sensory object. And the uh, Lampana is the intellectual object or object of protection. So uh, a person cuts off uh, some Vishaya from the sensory horizon, which are of the sense, sense organ. And uh, this, uh, this is uh, the function of uh, Vitaka. And the function of Vichara is to uh, construct links, construct associations between relationships between the object, this object and the other objects. But since causality is not uh, directly perceived, so uh, the concept of uh, causality turns out to be a product of the dark and which are because uh, we do, do not we do not perceive um, all these uh, causal processes. And uh, for example, we uh, may, of course, uh, refer to, for example, uh, David Hume, a uh, Scottish philosopher, who uh, doubted that uh, causality is a real, a real process or a real, a real, a real phenomenon. Well, and uh, the main principle, the main uh, law of causality is fixed in Buddhism in a so-called so Artitya Samuppada, or the law of dependent origination. And uh, Shinra uh, in the first uh, chapter of his Samuppada, analyzes uh, this term, uh, taking into consideration for the, for, for first the, its um, a literal meaning, its grammatical structure, and its uh, peculiar feature for not only uh, Buddhist, but uh, Indian philosophers as well, or all, all other Indian philosophers, Brahmanic philosophers. And uh, how can we understand the components, components of this complex world? The first uh, component, the word pratitya, uh, the root e, pratitya. Uh, means uh, movement, according to general activity, and the prefix prati uh, gives it a different meaning, the position, prati, literally. The ending of uh, this word is the uh, ending of uh, general. Uh, so, according to general activity, uh, prati uh, has the same structure as uh, such words, as uh, Sanskrit words, as uh, words as bhutva, be, or drishtva, seeing, or any, anything. 
However, the use of adjunct is, is the first component of the component word is so uh, highly uh, unusual in Sanskrit. In addition, in Sanskrit, uh, it's usually to use, it's uh, usually indicate, uh, indicated some action. Uh, the subject that precedes another. Uh, components of these actions, but in the case of the law of dependent origination, uh, the first uh, thing is, is uh, the, the thing that depends on something, and, and then as a result of this, it came to, it, it, is, it, it, it comes to be. The second component, somewhat further, is understood by Shinaki and his arising, uh, appearance, uh, manifestation, and uh, in original, in the, in the basic Sanskrit uh, text, he used the word proud of power, appearance, manifestation, being becoming visible or audible. And the general meaning of the analyzed term of communication is uh, as follows. This is the emergence of realities uh, depending on causes and conditions. Uh, so, uh, if we try to also translate the particular small part according to the Chandrakirti literally, we'll get uh, something, some, some phrase like this. By acquiring dependence of the process, the emergence of realities takes place. So, the principle, the, the first principle of uh, cost relationships, according to Mahay, according to the first law, to uh, Mahimaka, the first principle is uh, the dependence. If uh, some A, some object, uh, depends on B, uh, this, uh, this uh, causal dependence uh, means that uh, A exists. Because of B, A exists, and, and, and if B disappears, uh, A disappears too. So uh, the, the main principle, of course, is a uh, mutual relationship because it's uh, important. It's important to notice that uh, not only uh, effect and uh, effect depends on cause, but also uh, cause depends on effect because um, they are in mutual relationships. And if uh, A is not uh, an effect, then B uh, is can cannot cannot be. It's a cause. So we, uh, in, in this, in such case, we of course lose any uh, causal relationship. And uh, in general, I should like here this entire grammatical and etymological argument uh, can be summed as uh, following. The first etymology uh, which he himself uh, considers uh, correct is this, the perfect party means uh, acquiring, e to move, therefore party here means uh, acquiring depending on something, samapada is arising, thus party to samapada generally means the, the arising of realities depending on causes and conditions. Uh, but there can be uh, two another uh, interpretations that uh, should not get diffused. According to the second interpretation, Prati is seen as uh, depending on causes and conditions. According uh, to this, um, uh, the Prati means um, distributive, it uh, has a distributive meaning. E is a verb meaning to go, to move. And idea is understood as uh, that which is uh, characterized by impermanence. In this case, pratiti will mean transient, and spratiti samapada will mean arising of temporary things. This interpretation, as I said, uh, is rejected by uh, both mathematical schools, prasangic and swatantika. And finally, the third interpretation, uh, accepted by uh, the swatantikas, but not by prasangis, and prasangikas is as follows. Prat is a prefix with distributive meaning. E to achieve, to acquire, then pratitis what it means the emergence of reality is depending on certain different causes and conditions. Of course, uh, according to Matthew Prasangika, uh, this interpretation is incorrect. Uh, 
because uh, according to, uh, for example, let, let's take for, for the interpretation of this, let's take, uh, for example, for example, the compendium of Vedama, Vedama Simoche, by Asanga. Asanga discusses, among other things, uh, so, so, so called formative factors not related to uh, consciousness, Chita, uh, Karita, Sanskara. They belong to the fourth group of uh, dharmas, formative factors responsible for the formation and uh, manifestation of uh, karmic results. And uh, these include such factors as continuation, probability, uh, logical uh, particularity, and correspondence yoga. And the Sangha defines them as follows. What is continuation? It's a designation indicating the continuity of uh, connection of causes and effects. What is a logical particularity? It is a uh, designation uh, that indicating the difference between causes and effects. And uh, what is uh, continuation? It is a uh, designation indicating the similarity of cause and effect. The term continuation priority indicates uh, that action of a, a cause uh, comes right after the cause itself has disappeared. Otherwise, uh, no action will, will generate uh, karma, karma consequences, because uh, if uh, a cause is, uh, is existing, it cannot uh, give place uh, to uh, an effect. So, um, basing on this uh, this idea, um, both Asanga, uh, Chandrakirti, uh, Nagarjuna, and so and other uh, Mahayana thinkers, they uh, considered uh, causality in such a way. First, some. Uh, some phenomenon, for example, some, some A uh, exists. And uh, it can uh, be a cause for some B, for some other phenomenon, for its uh, effect. But while uh, an A, this A exists, it cannot, it, uh, cannot produce effect because uh, it cannot give place to, to this effect. And uh, according to Mahatma, why uh, the causality is empty, the, 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 the concept of causality is empty, the cause. When the cause, so-called so, so cause, exists, it cannot be the cause because uh, it uh, does not give place to uh, an effect, to its effect. So the cause must disappear must uh, give place, must disappear to, uh, for, for, the, for the effect to be manifested. But when uh, a cause disappeared, this cause uh, disappeared, and effect uh, is manifested in this situation, the effect cannot be effect because its uh, cause uh, is already, does not, does not already exist. So uh, any causality, According to uh, Mahayana thinkers, in uh, in the absolute in the, on the level of absolute truth, any causality is uh, empty uh, concept, uh, and uh, it can work only as the the notion, the notion of causality can work only as uh, not not as a description of any reality, but only as um, as an instrument. Instrument to transform the uh, mind, the consciousness of, uh, of a person. And when a person uh, achieves enlightenment, achieves nirvana and bodhi, then only then it, uh, he understands that all these concepts, all these concepts that uh, conceptions, theories, uh, philosophies, uh, that led him to this uh, enlightenment, all these uh, conceptions and theories and so on were empty because they were all the instruments for the enlightenment. And the facility uh, itself is just an uh, instrument 
as any other notions, any other concepts, any other ideas. On the, or, or can they, no, no, no conscious, no, no, no concept can uh, describe reality, but some concepts may lead to enslavement and bondage in Sasar, and uh, other uh, concepts, other ideas can lead to enlightenment, can lead a person out of uh, Sasar. And uh, the last. Uh, Picture the last chain of uh, Buddhist notion of Buddhist concept of causality is that uh, any any cause must must uh, do a join to uh, its uh, effect because if they are coincide even partially they cannot be a, a cause and effect because uh, cause must disappear to uh, give place to effect. And if uh, we have a gap between them, then uh, they, uh, in the same way, they can be a cause and effect exactly because of this gap. So they must be adjoined, uh, adjoined to each other. And uh, this is the one of the main traits of Rehtis uh, of Bada, because any Midana, any uh, component of Rehtis of Bada, uh, directly adjoins to each other. When uh, there is a video, then, then uh, there is uh, uh, yeah, and so on. Uh, when when there is uh, there is uh, chat, then there there is uh, jar and so on. And um, and that's uh, that's uh, this principle. Or this principle of causality according to uh, Buddhism, according to Baha'i Buddhism. I think uh, it, uh, it uh, was the reason because of, because of which uh, the concept of Allah uh, Vishnana, store of consciousness, was uh, introduced because uh, store of consciousness uh, was the So see, was this glue that uh, glued uh, all the causes and uh, effects uh, to each other? It was the uh, transmitter, so to say, the transmitter of uh, causal relationships. So uh, these were the principles, I think, of causality. Questions, please. Yes. I, I have no question. I have an addition. Maybe okay. let see. <laughs> uh, if you're concerned with the box, if you mentioned Pitak and Vishal, and in this pair of concepts, as in some other cases, it is it would be fruitful to combine the uh, elaboration from the Buddhist and the uh, Hindu side of philosophy. Because, for example, no, it, it, as, um, as the uh, yes, yes, we see uh, when we say Sanjaya, the Buddhists elaborate it as an act of consciousness having an object which can be identified with a word or expression. But the Hindus and also Govayakarandas and others speak about the sanction as about the expressions themselves. So the expression and the big and the uh givenness for of the expression through the consciousness are one uh, are two sides of the one phenomena. But the Buddhist liberated one and the Hindu another side. So is it with the Tarka and Visha? Because the Buddhist liberated is as uh, as the Chai uh, Dharma as the uh Acts or perhaps events in the consciousness, but and to uh, uh, the definition was given by the by uh, my colleague. But you see, if we uh, think about the Bartholomew's Bartholomew's theory of the levels of language, so we, it is quite clear that Vitarka and Vichara are two aspects of the medium batch. 
and it, it corresponds to the uh, well nominalization or the uh, the subject of the the subject that uh, that uh, that uh, the theme of my thinking. It is given by Vitarka, but the content of my thinking is given by Vichara, and it is the thinking as not uh, not necessarily spoken aloud as speaking as thinking for for me. Yeah, and uh, it, it elucidates uh, I think greatly this uh, this concept. And uh, I'm in, uh, in the process of writing a new an article about it that I'm sure because it is blurred in the literature. So thank mm -hmm. thank you. No, I said uh, exactly the same because uh, moment, uh, I'll answer because uh, that really is the. Um, now see, I when I translated uh, some uh, Sankhya text, yeah. uh, when I worked over the Sankhya text, I translated uh, there, there are notions the concepts of uh, manas and Buhi, and it's like manas as uh, uh, objectivating uh, mind, objectivating consciousness. And uh, put here as uh, intentional questions because uh, Mars um, fixes some uh, some objects in the uh, in the horizon, uh, kind of so 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 called phenomenological maybe horizon. Uh, it fixes and put here uh, constructs or puts uh, some uh, relationships between these objects and other uh, parts of this horizon. And uh, here uh, the relationships are the same because uh, Vitarka fixes an object and Vichara uh, builds, builds links between these objects and other objects. For example, uh, glass. Uh, stands on the table. Uh, we fix us by we, we fix by uh, uh, the the glass and the table, and uh, that one stands on another. Uh, this relationship uh, is constructed by Vichara. So Vichara is uh, constructive. So say the constructive constructive mind constructive consciousness uh, constructive process uh, into the. And uh, of course, uh, yes, uh, in general speech, it's always uh, in our mind. So, your question, please. Uh, thank you. Yes. What, is, uh, what is the amount of people's well, There are two words together. Yes, there, there are two, two, two words according to any Sanskrit uh, gram, Pratitya. Uh, according to Chandra Kirti, uh, this uh, means uh, the um, small part means origination.
Hello.